And it is a delight to be back. I, um, I was thinking back to that year. In between my third and my fourth year, I was on the road with a team, uh, a touring team for half of it, and then I lived here in Swift Current for half of it. And I don't know how much you know about that, that time that I was here in Swift Current, but this faithful, loving fellowship was a godsend for me. Uh, you folks loved me, and you took care of me. I remember Pat and Helen went with me to help, buy, help me buy a car, because I didn't know what to look for, but <laughs> Pat did. And um, you, you folks have really blessed me. So when we were coming down to Miller to do a, an exchange weekend where our teams learn from one another, it was a no-brainer that Faith Evangelical was the first place I'd call, and it worked. So he saved me a lot of phone calls, too. <laughs> so it's, it's a delight to be here. For those that I've maybe not met, my name is Tim Lanko. I spent four years studying at Miller College, and I've, uh, I'm, I'm now three years into teaching drama and doing recruitment at Nippowin Bible College. And uh, these are my students, and I'll invite them up. And they're going to each introduce themselves, where they're from, what year of study they're in, and then one interesting fact about themselves. All right, my name is Shania Bukert. I am from Austin, Manitoba. Oh. I'm in my third year at Nippowin Bible College. And an interesting fact about me is that I broke my leg when I was in grade three. My name is Caitlin Watson. I'm from Langenberg, Saskatchewan. I'm in my first year. And an interesting fact about me, I love lizards. My name is Jordan. I'm from Regina, Saskatchewan. I'm in my second year, and an interesting fact about me, um, I really liked dinosaurs growing up. in the 
of you haven't met me I guess I already did an intro but my name is Benjamin Steppen and I am going to share a little bit about what Nip One has been teaching me so um, sorry I'm not I'm not well, I've got my notes on there <laughs> so, whatever, no. um, so when I'm thinking about my life I often think about Nicodemus how he only came to Jesus at night he only he didn't want anybody else to know that he was a follower of Jesus. He may have believed, but he just didn't want to let anyone know because of his, you know, authority where he was, and possibly he could have lost friends. And later on we see he was with Jesus at the end. And uh, I think that's a pretty important model. Um, and being in Living Proof and just being at school in general has really pushed me out of my comfort zone and that um, that's that's something that we often talk about you know your comfort zone when you're being pushed out of your comfort zone it's kind of an awkward thing but it's always so rewarding and this is my first time singing up on stage and it is awesome I enjoyed it so much and just going around learning lines may be difficult but being able to um, show God's word, and just love the people that we are te like showing. And yeah, I, I just love it so much. And um, I want to read, our, our theme for the year for the student body is being rooted in Christ. And so I thought I would just read Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. Um, but blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green, and they never stop producing fruit. And for me, that's been quite encouraging to um, want to serve. You know, get, get the word and just grow strong roots in Christ. And I, 
I don't really know where I am going after Bible college, but it was quite important for me to get, get roots, get the foundation in Christ. And so wherever I'm going, I want to bear good fruit. There we go. Thank you for listening. Would you all please stand again as we sing together? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone I've been set free my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. promise good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures my chains are gone I've been saved My Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve. sun forbear to shine but God who called me here below will be forever mine my chains are gone I've been set free my God my sin of me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing
loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide, he will wash away my sin, let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. share a little bit about what God's been doing in my life at NBC. So um, before I do that, I'll just sit, let you know a little bit about myself. Um, I grew up in a Christian home, and I went to church, I went to Sunday school, youth group. Um, uh, I also attended a Christian private school, and I went to camp in the summers. So I had a pretty comfortable life, I guess you could call it, um, or maybe sheltered. <laughs> um, I also worked at camp at, once I was old enough, and um, it was really challenging to me to go from being a camper and being fed spiritually to being the cabin leader and spiritually feeding these campers. And it was <laughs> pretty intimidating to be sharing my faith with all these campers that grew up in homes that were completely different than mine. But um, I decided that I wanted to get a good biblical foundation. Uh, not that I didn't have one at home, but I wanted to get one from Bible school. And so I decided to go to Bible school. And uh, yeah, I had only planned on doing one year, and I was... I joined the drama team in that first year, and <laughs> it was pretty scary because I had done drama in high school before, but then doing drama in a Bible college where we go to different places and talk to different people, and yeah, it was just really scary to go up and talk to people, but once I actually got into conversation, it was amazing to see the different conversations that I could have and how I could be encouraged as well as encouraging other people. So that was a very good stretching experience. And then in my second year, which I hadn't originally planned on, but God had other plans. So I was, I was the only second year on the drama team. Uh, all the other people were first years. And so I was kind of the leader of the drama team as well as just a member of it and that was it was pretty stretching to be kind of in charge and um, leading other people there were other people that were older than me on the team but yeah it was a good learning experience because I had I didn't think I was that much of a leader and then I got into third year and that was even more stretching because we have a practicum, and so I'm the student leader of the drama team. I'm actually the student leader this year, and 
Um, so we had we have classes about leadership, but I still didn't think that I could be a leader. And um, yeah, these cl these classes and the staff at school were so encouraging, and they helped me to see that I do have gifts in leadership, and it's not just certain people that are given the gifts of leadership, but everyone has these in some way, shape, or form. Um, I also <laughs> I also preached a sermon this year in Bible school, so that was something I did not think I could do, but God showed me that I can. And um, one verse I want to share with you is Psalm 138, verse 3. And I discovered this verse when I was working on memorizing Psalm 139. So Psalm 138, verse 3, it says, On the day I called, you answered me. You made me bold with strength in my soul. And even though I only came across this verse a few months ago, I can see how that was working in my life in the past and how it's, working in the how it's going to be working in the future because there's no possible way I could have made it through th almost three years of Bible school without God's strength pushing me into places that I never thought I could be and doing things that I never thought I could do. So, yeah, I think I'll call Pastor Kelsey up here now and... Oh, I was um, sliding. Like leg, right? <laughs> I was sliding at a hill at my camp in the winter, ah. and there was a pole in the snow, and I the went around wheel that. And the sled. <laughs> yeah. We won't no. hit trees. Oh, anyway, mm -hmm. <laughs> we're going to be doing our offering now, so uh, we'll have our ushers come forward. Tim's going to play a song on the piano for us while we're doing that, and uh, after that into the play so let's just bow our heads for a for a thankfulness for our offering Heavenly Father we thank you for the opportunities you give to us we thank you for our talents and abilities we thank you that we are in a country a province a city where we have opportunities and Lord we thank you for the blessings that you are to us in our businesses, in our jobs, uh, in our retirement years. We thank you, Lord, that you continually look after us. You continually keep us fed and clothed. You keep us warm in these winter temperatures. And Lord, we may not have all that we desire, but we have all that we need. And we thank you for how faithful you are for providing all these things to us and for us. And Lord, as we are experiencing those blessings from you, help us to remember to give you the glory for those. Without you, we would be, we would be nothing. Even though, Lord, we may be successful, we would still be nothing because without our relationship with you, it would be empty. So first and foremost, we thank you for your son coming down on the cross and dying for our sins and rising again. Secondly, Lord, we thank you for how much you love us, regardless of how much we deserve it or not. It's not based on our works, on our merits, but on our decision to follow you. And we thank you for how faithful you are to us all the time. Please take these offerings accept these we can call them gifts from our hands but really it's it's just a, it's just a small portion of how greatly you bless us so lord accept this tithe and offering that we're about to collect continue to give our church wisdom on how to use it well continue to help us to support those who are missionaries to those who are in need continue to help us not only be a church who is fantastically devoted in their giving but also one who is 
a church who is open to looking around and seeing what needs need to be fulfilled. We thank you for this opportunity. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. I love those songs that have that incidental chord in there that just sounds so, it just, it just moves your soul. But sometimes I miss them. <laughs> okay, the, the team is going to run backstage and they're going to start getting ready. Um, this, uh, th the word that we have for you this morning uh, comes from the book of Genesis. And um, this, is, this is one of the stories, one of the, the occurrences one of the times that God intervened and uh, let people know exactly what he thought and the wrath that came along with that and the mercy, the tender mercy that he showed to those who trusted him. Uh, so I hope that this morning you are encouraged and blessed by this play. This is entitled, I Can Sing a Rainbow. I'm singing the theme song. That is not our theme song. It's not? But it's so, so... Expensive? Oh. Do you know who owns that song? Um... Sony. Oh. Well, how about sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows, that everything That belongs that's... to Hamlet and Liebling. Red and yellow and pink and Arthur green. Hamilton. There's a kiss at the end of the rainbow. Not even on topic. Why are there so many songs about no. rainbow? What? That one belongs to Disney. Disney. No one is more expensive than Disney. Well, what do you suggest? <laughs> well, we hoped you'd write one for us. Write one? Yep, and uh, can you hurry? The play has already started. But I... Look up there! What a view! They always give me chills! A multi-hued masterpiece! A rich and radiant thrill! I... I can't write on... What? I don't know, I can't... What? Hey! What? It's just a song. They pretty much write themselves. Sure. Let me know when you're done. But don't you think... Think there's really a pot of gold? Nah, that's just a scheme. I'd still look. You're a nut. It doesn't hurt to dream. All right, focus up. We've got a job. Oh, yeah. A story to tell. A passage to preach. A truth to teach. And rumors to dispel. And I've been practicing. That's great. Uh, where are your costumes? Oh, yes. I'll, I'll be right back. And Jordan, how's that song coming? Oh, uh, um, well, uh, somewhere under the rain. No. I know. And go get your costume. I have a costume? Go! Oh, dear. And you. Did you bring your imagination? Well, you're going to need it because we're headed way across the ocean, way back in time to tell a tale that may seem way too crazy to be true. Are you ready? So, my son, you slew a serpent? 
Yeah. Oh, and you dismembered a dragon? Uh-huh. And killed a king? Yeah. Oh, that's my boy. There were giants on the earth in those days. The sons of God came in to the daughters of man, and they bore sons to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. And I couldn't be prouder. Thoughts of evil filled the minds of young and old alike, stealing, raping, torching, killing, any time they liked. Grief ran through the heart of God and anger up his spine. Their wickedness was dreadful. It was time to draw the line. How long do they think that I will put up with their wrong? I'm sorry that I've made them all and let them live so long. And God declared, I will bring their trespasses to an end. But unless I save some, none will make it through what I will send. Nice day, isn't it? What are you looking at? You, but, um, I'll just go. And don't come back. That's my boy. Noah was a righteous man, walking with the Lord. Your mercy is far greater than can fully be explored. Noah is the only man blameless at this time. Violence and corruption was on a steady climb. So, son, you have done away with the dressmaker. Yep. And you've finished the farmer. Uh-huh. Oh, do you think you could wipe out the woodcutter? Sure. Oh, that's my boy. <laughs> and God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. I'm sorry, what? Build an ark of gopher wood. An ark? It's a boat. Why didn't you just call it that? Who are you to argue? Fair point. You must build it out of gopher wood and cover it inside and outside with pitch. That's a lot of pitch. The length shall be 300 cubits. Its width, 50 cubits. And its height, 30 cubits. That's a lot of cubits. You need to construct it with lower, second, and third decks. That's a lot of decks. Behold, I will send a flood to kill all things that breathe. The world will have no defense against what I'll unsheathe. The earth is full of violence, and I cannot stand the wrong. Mankind will be wiped out, and they won't be waiting long. Are you serious? Completely. But Noah, go into the ark with you and your sons. I'll ensure you're on board before the rain's begun. Take with you a pair of each and every beast and bird. Don't forget the food you'll need. Now do these things you've heard. Fear not for your life, my son. I covenant these things. Destruction I may pour out, but escape for you I'll bring. And Noah did everything exactly as God had commanded him. Oh, hey, Jordan. Yeah? You know that part about the covenant? Yeah? It should be in the song. Oh, that. The rainbow is all about God's covenant. Uh, yes, but... Come on, try a bit. Now? Now! Uh, um... Oh. Uh, cross my heart and hope to die my word is something else stand by my sign of love is hanging in the sky not bad a little pitchy but i'm sure you'll warm up pitchy i'm sure you'll warm up sham sham father you called i did the Lord has given us a project. Oh boy, a barn? No. A bridge? No. A rock band? No. A beard growing contest? What? No. Then what? A boat. Oh. Well, actually he called it an ark. Why didn't he just call it a boat? Beats me, but who are we to argue? Fair point. Ark is the English word translating God's original instructions. Ark comes from the Latin word arca, meaning chest, 
and sounds very similar to another Latin word, arcere, which means to hold off or defend. So the ark was a wooden chest provided by God to hold off the floodwaters and defend those inside. So where are your brothers? Brothers? Brothers! Where are they? Go get them! Right! Brothers, brothers, where are my brothers? Aha, you are my brother, I shall call you Ham. Please come with me. And one more, I'm sure there's one more. Japheth, there you are. You're always slinking off when there's work to be done. Come along, come along. You are my brother's father. Excellent. Which one is Ham? Right here. Ah, uh, right. Your ham. As the father of the first great hunters, do you consider yourself to be a good hunter? All right, we can use that. And Japheth, your children all turn out to be seafaring people. Uh, have you ever built a boat? Could you build another boat? Big. <laughs> All right. Well, this boat ain't going to build itself. Give me a hand. The four men wasted not a day in getting to their task. Pitch and saws and wood were gathered, just as God had asked. Thirty cubits up and down, and fifty cubits wide. The ark was planned down to a T to save those shut inside. Board on pole and beam to plank. Pieces fell in place. Faced with mounting urgency, they kept a whirlwind pace. Long did Noah and his sons shed blood and sweat and tears. But never did they give it up, for it was God they feared. Ouch! Oh, he hit my finger! Keep building, boys. This is how God is going to save us. Years went by. Until at last, the, the ark, ark was, was finally done. done. Noah stopped and took it all in, along with his three sons. Well, she's finished. Uh, Japheth has a splinter. Oh. I guess we better cut it off. No! The splinter? No, his hand! I don't you think he'd be too happy about that. Uh, the splinter, of well, course. We're just trying to help, but we don't often do it the best way. Wonderful! You oh should have seen goodness. your face, though. <laughs> Thanks for your help, you guys. Thank you for your help. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my brothers. Once the ark was complete, God gave further instructions. Come into the ark, you with all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You must take with you seven each of every clean animal, a male and its female, two each of every unclean animal, a male and its female, and two each of every beast and bird, a male and its female. For after seven more days I will cause the floodwaters to rise, and I will destroy from the earth all living things that I have made. Jordan! Jordan, that's perfect! What is? Okay, now say everything that he just said, but with a tune. You're kidding. Nope. God's judgment for sin is the whole conflict of this story. Yeah, but he just said that. Sing! <sighs> um, Never again will I send the same waters to drown the whole ground and destroy all I've made. I like it. Can we get back to the story? Uh, good idea. And Noah did everything according to what God had commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the floodwaters were on the earth. 600? How am I even standing? Don't, don't be so shocked. You don't even die until you're 950. Spoiler alert. Can we get back to the animals? Good idea. And Noah did everything exactly as God had commanded him. 
well, I guess I need some animals. What are you guys all looking at me for? I'll take care of this. Go forth and gather. You know which animals I want. Yes, sir. Understood, right. sir. I'm on it. Okay. Um, all right. I like frogs. Well, I, I would like a couple of zebras. Um, Perhaps. Is anyone here willing to be zebras. some animals? I want a pony. No, no. Would you like, like to be a zebra? Yeah. yeah, what kind of animal are you? What are those? Are you a horse? Uh, awesome. Be a, can you be a Kate? parrot? Do you want to be a parrot? And if you come would be an here. antelope? All right. Oh. That would be perfect. Come over here. On stage. Would you like to come up? This guy back around you. This guy around you. Oh, boy. Which one? Somebody right. needed. I need someone. Oh. All right. What kind of animal are you? Antelope? All right, we got an antelope here. <laughs> <laughs> this sure is a wild bunch. You should right, see the ones I left behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just listen to our storytelling and do exactly as we say. Okay. Once the ark was complete, Noah and his wife went on board the boat with his sons and their wives. Hold on. Did you say that I have a wife? Uh, yeah. Didn't you know that? I guess I never thought about it before. <laughs> well, we have selected the most intelligent, skillful, graceful, most beautiful woman in the room to play the part of Mrs. Noah. Really? It's you! Uh-huh. Oh! All right. <laughs> Noah climbed on board the boat to flee the coming flood, taking with him members of his closest flesh and blood. God impelled the beasts to come from far and far beyond, and come they did from den and cave and field and cliff and pond. Zebras, llamas, monkeys, bats, elephants, and swans. Tigers, cows, and kangaroos strolled oh. across the lawns. Two by two, they represented everything with breath. Two by two, they ambled up to dodge the watery death. All right, and just when they around all here. had stowed away here. with bleat and bark and roar, God reached out his mighty hand and shut the massive door. Now what? Have patience. It takes seven days before the rain falls. After seven more days, the floodwaters began to rise. Underground water erupted from beneath the earth, and mighty torrents of rain fell from the sky. So the clouds are caving in? Yep. And the ground is beginning to gush? I guess. And the entrance to that boat is blocked? Looks like it. Run for the hills, boy! <sighs> the floodwaters continued to rise for 40 days, lifting the ark high above the surface of the earth. Soon, the floodwaters had covered even the highest mountains, reaching more than 22 feet above their peaks. All the living things on earth died. Birds, wild animals, domestic animals, small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the people. Everything that lived and breathed on the dry land died. Everything but those who were safe in the ark. Uh, dear, could you pass me an apple? I'm sorry, it looks like the horses ate them. What did you do that for? Don't you know who built you this ark? What about a uh, banana? The monkeys. Are you serious? Bread? Mice. Eggs? Cobras. Peanuts? Elephants. The hummus. Uh, actually, 
no one's touched the hummus. <laughs> God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock that were with him on the ark. He sent a wind to blow across the earth. Whoosh! And the floodwaters began to recede. Blow, blow, blow. 150 days. Exactly five months. After the flood began. Third. The ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Dry land? Well, it's not completely dry. The ark had come to rest on the mountaintop, but that and the mountain peaks around it were not visible for another two and a half months. This is taking so long. Would you prefer to end up like that warrior and his mother? Take your time. Then Noah opened a window that he had built into the ark, and he released a raven. Yes, you with the black feathers, of course. Be free! And so the raven flew back and forth, and back and forth, until the floodwaters had receded upon the earth. You can go sit down. Then Noah also released a dove. Yes, you with the white feathers. Get going! Noah released a dove to see if the floodwaters had receded and it could find dry ground. But the bird could find no place to land. So it returned to the boat, and Noah held out his hand and drew it back inside. It's okay, if at first you don't succeed, fly, fly again. After waiting seven days, Noah released the dove again. Get going. This time, it returned to him in the evening with a fresh olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the floodwaters were almost gone. Then after another seven days, Noah released the dove again. You know what to do. <laughs> this time, it did not come back. Now you know what that means. Dry land. Woohoo! It's almost over, guys. Then God said to Noah, though it probably wasn't in rhyme and meter, and your kin, then release the creatures from their pens and let them go begin to multiply and fill the earth and bring it back to life. Then go and do the same with you and your wife. You heard the boss. Get going. It was nice to have you. But go find your own food, okay? We made it. We made it. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and on it he sacrificed one each of every clean animal and every clean bird. The Lord was pleased with the aroma of the sacrifice, and he said to himself, For as long as the earth remains, men will plant and harvest grains. Hot and cold continue sure. Snow and sun shall endure. Day and night will keep their times, in spite of mankind's heinous crimes. The sin of the world had offended God. They wanted a world without God, so he showed them what it would be like if he wasn't there. Creation committed mutiny against the world. Everything returned to the watery chaos that had existed before God created a beautiful, orderly, inhabitable place under humanity's care. And now with Noah and his family, God is starting over. But that's not the end of his plan. Next came one of the Lord's many covenants. Promises that he would keep. Behold, I establish my covenant with you, your descendants after you, and with all generations. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by the floodwaters. 
Never again shall I send a flood to destroy the earth. Once the flood was over, God placed a sign of his covenant in the sky where Noah and all those who were with him could see it. God gave us the rainbow. Once they're all ready. Blue, green, yellow. Ah, here's a witch. Whenever clouds hang over the earth and a rainbow appears in the sky, God will remember his covenant with Noah and with all living creatures. Never again will floodwaters destroy all life. The rainbow is a sign of the covenant that God confirmed with all of humanity. Thousands of years later, a person would be hung in the sky much like the rainbow, and be a sign of hope, a sign of God's covenant with mankind. God would again covenant to be merciful and preserve some from punishment for sin. God would again covenant to restore life where death has taken over. God would covenant through Jesus Christ to save those who call upon him and repent. Much like those who pass through the floodwaters, much like those who passed through the waters of baptism, much like Jesus who passed through the grave. We are invited to join with Christ in his death and resurrect to new life. A new life that is free from sin, free from death, and free to worship and enjoy our Maker. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it abundantly. A worldwide flood will never happen again, yet every one of us still needs God's mercy. His standard is no different. Yet he sent Jesus to satisfy it on our behalf. Trust the Lord. Get on the ark, so to speak. For no one is safer than those protected by God. So, Jordan. Yes? How's that song coming along? You're still stuck on that. Please. We've been through a lot in the last half hour of... Oh, I suppose I don't mind. Yes! But only if you give me a beat. We'd be glad to. Cross my heart and hope to die. My word is something I'll stand by. My sign of love is hanging in the sky. Never again will I send the same waters to drown the whole ground and destroy all I've made. Promise will last for your sons and daughters. I'll hold back by wrath even if they have strayed. Someday soon, it won't be a flood I save you from. Once I'm through. Death itself will die. Never again will I send the same waters to drown the whole ground and destroy what I love. My promise will last for your sons and daughters. And you can know by my rainbow up above. of the Jews, God of the Bible, who has revealed himself, has revealed himself through Jesus Christ. And he is the God that we trust today. He is the God who does have a high standard. And in Christ, he sees us as completely righteous. So trust Christ. Follow him 
and delight in the Lord's delight in you. Thank you so much for having us here this morning. I don't know if you want to say anything else to close out the eve, uh, the morning, or if you want me to just pray. Okay, sounds good. Father, I thank you so very much for your goodness to us. Thank you for your kindness to us. And I thank you for this time that we've had this morning to come into your house amongst your people and to worship you. I pray that you would keep opening the eyes of our hearts to the riches that are in the inheritance inheritance with Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, we're dismissed. I know that the team would love to meet you, so don't run away unless you have to.